Today we're going to talk about how to use the frequency separation action that many of you may be familiar with for doing retouching, but we're going to use it with the mixer brush to demonstrate how you can keep some of the texture in a mixer painting of an animal such as this elephant when you want to keep that great texture in the hide. Now a lot of you probably paint a lot of birds and um, wildlife that have fur but when it comes to painting things that have hide it's a little bit difficult to get some of that texture because the mixer brush takes so much of that texture away. So this technique will show you how to use both layers of a frequency separation, both the low frequency as an underpainting and the high frequency to put back some of that texture after you've done your mixer painting. So let's just get started. The first thing we're going to do is um, I've already made the selection of this elephant and I've taken it and cleaned up the edges, I've run it through a denoise, and I've also taken it through my um, Adobe Camera Raw and added some clarity and texture and opened up my shadows. So it's um, pretty grungy looking already, which is fine because again, when you are gonna use the mixer brush, uh, you're going to soften so many of these pixels down so the more texture and grunge that you start with the better off because you're going to soften everything through the mixer process. So this is the image that we're going to start with today and I'm only going to paint a small area here. Um, we don't have time in a video to do this entire element so I'm going to show you how to use the frequency separation um, in the mixer process, we're going to mixer paint just a small area just to demonstrate and I'm also going to add back a few little texture layers to demonstrate how you would combine all these techniques together to give you some beautiful texture on this elephant hide. So first of all, um, here's the thing we're going to start with and I'm going to um, immediately um, go to my actions and I'm going to execute my frequency separation action. Um, if you don't have an action for frequency separation, um, I can add into uh, the comments below a couple of um, recommendations of YouTube videos to watch. Um, one of them on the Flurn channel actually gives you an action, a great action for it. Um, I'm going to execute one of my two different actions that I have for frequency separation. Um, all of them operate pretty much the same. At po some point, it stops you in the middle and asks you to go ahead and um, execute the blur step, which um, when you're doing the blur step, it wants you to basically select a Gaussian blur on your particular image just to the point where you removed all of the texture and you're left with just color. So I'm going to do that on this particular image, set it about 42 pixels, that's probably about right. And then it finishes up the action. So as you can see here, um, the two layers that the action builds um, the first one is the low frequency, which is just the blur layer, and the other one is this high frequency, which is just texture. Um, again, if you're not familiar with uh, frequency separation, I recommend, I'll recommend a couple of videos for you to watch. So we are going to um, turn these two layers off for right now because um, we don't need them immediately. The first thing we need to do is do some mixer painting of uh, some of the elephant. So I'm going to turn these two off in this folder and we're going to go back to the original elephant. Now if you have watched some of my videos in the past you know that I am not a fan of using a mixer brush in sample all layers because 
it just slows down the processor like crazy. So I um, use a technique that I learned many, many, many years ago um, that builds a mixer layer where you embed the entire image into a seemingly blank layer where you have 100% of the pixels at 100% of their saturation um, and opacity and the mixer brush can use those pixels but you don't have to turn on sample all layers you get a seemingly blank layer over the top of your original and you can paint with a mixer brush with sample all layers turned off off so again um, because i paint all the time i have um, turned all of this workflow into action so i have my mixer what i call my mixer one percent action i'm going to run that quickly on my original layer and here is my um, essentially blank layer you don't see anything on this layer but actually a hundred percent of my image is embedded in that layer um, because it's all there I'm going to turn the opacity of my original layer down to just a little bit so that I can see it as a reference um, but um, and I'm going to lock it so that I don't accidentally paint on it and I am going to go to the seemingly blank layer um, which is not actually blank. I'm going to grab a mixer brush, a brush that um, is, I'll show you what it looks like, large. Um, and then um, I've put mixer settings on it. Um, it's a fairly dry brush. I've only got it 3% wet. Uh, load is 52, mix is 23, and my flow is 61. This gives me some control over it. Um, but again, I'm going to paint on this mixer one percent layer and you'll see that i have um, the ability to paint rather rapidly without any ability uh, need for my brush to drag and slow down because i have all of my pixels right here in this seemingly blank layer um, but um, it is not blank it has my entire painting embedded into this layer um, if you would like to learn how to build this layer, it's a really simple process. Um, I believe there is a video out on my YouTube channel on how to do that. Um, I will also put a copy of that link in there. If not there, it's out on my blog somewhere. I have talked about this many, many times in the past. But again, we are going to quickly mixer paint following the direction of the flow of the hide just so that we can get some paint on the mixer layer here. I'm not going to worry too much about the eye because I always do my eyes separately but we, uh, we do want to get some paint here. Again, I'm not going to worry uh, too much about some blank areas because I'm going to show you how we're going to use that low frequency layer of the frequency separation to become our underpaint, which will catch all of this little junk that we missed. Um, this technique allows you to work quickly in large areas to get your basic mixer painting done um, because th that's not where you really want to spend your time. You want to spend your time on the details, um, adding back the texture and doing your overpaints and really um, doing the things that make your image creative. Um, the, mixer brush is really just the what I would consider the base layer of your painting if you're stopping your painting at your mixer brush then uh, you're cheating yourself because the mixer brush is just the first layer of painting um, it's just to get paint on the palette it's it's the six or eight layers of painting that you do after you've done the mixer brush that really bring your paintings to life. Um, and that's where 
I'm going to show you just a couple of those techniques today very quickly because I don't want this to be a, you know, two hour video. Um, again, I'm moving rather rapidly. Now you can see here that um, I've got a fairly dark area and I can't really see what that is. So um, I'm just going to bring it back up. Um, again, I can't paint on that layer. So I'm back up here on my mixer layer. Um, I'm going to I just need to make sure that I'm following the direction of the original um, painting on my mixer layer. So I bring my reference layer back up and now I can turn my opacity back down now that I've gotten some, again, it won't let me accidentally paint on it, which is nice because I've learned in the past that once you touch it, it's now your reference layer and for your brush and you will start painting away and then you'll be 300 brush strokes in and you'll go, oh my goodness, I've been painting on my reference layer. So again, um, let's get this up just a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Um, we're just doing enough so that I can demonstrate these techniques to you. Um, we're not going to paint the whole elephant today. Um, following the direction of the hide, you want to make always make sure you follow follow the lines of the original image as you're painting. It's very important. You get weird brush strokes, and you will be able to see them throughout your painting. So always follow the direction. Okay, I think we have enough uh, hide painted here so that you can, you'll be able to see the next few techniques that I'm going to demonstrate. Okay, so let's turn off our reference so you can see how ugly this really is. So you can see all the holes that I have here and you can see how much of this I've actually missed. But um, now let's turn on the um, underpainting. Um, I'm going to open up that folder and I'm going to drag that underpainting below my mixer painting and I'm going to turn it back on. So as you can see, that low frequency um, layer from the frequency separation has become our underpaint. And I'm going to label it as such. So now you can see all those little places that my brush missed. It, you don't even know that I've missed anything because the underpainting has filled in the color that was the appropriate color in between. Now let's turn on the high frequency layer, um, which is over the top of my mixer. Um, and we, it's in linear light because that's what the frequency separation does to it now, but we don't want it that strong. So let's pull down the opacity to maybe 40% and because we just want to add a little bit of that texture back in. So let's look at our painting now, turning it on and off. See how it brings back just a little bit of that texture. And again, you can do as much or as little as you want. Now you can go back again a little bit on your mixer brush. And you can, you can hit a few of those areas that you may have mixed, missed completely and you're seeing way too much of that texture through. But again, we're going to do another technique, so don't worry too much about it. So the next technique, now that we have our mixer brush painting done, um, we're going to go to the next thing, which is to add some of this texture back on top. Again, don't worry about that eye because we're probably going to do it later on in a painting. We're going to do an eye replacement um, and completely paint the eye separately. So um, whatever your eye turns out to be in your original painting, just ignore it. Okay, so now we have our frequency separation, both layers used in our painting, and we have some nice texture added back in, which we have some control over. You can also decide to put this back into like the overlay mode if you don't like that linear light, um, and then crank it back up a little bit. It gives you a little bit different effect, a um, little more subtle, 
um, the linear lights like kind of like a hammer um, so if you choose to it's just texture so you can do whatever you like with it if you like the overlay mode a little bit better you might want to change to the overlay but here's the next thing that we need to do we need to add some of that texture back in um, that's uh, given us um, some dimension to this hide so here's what we here's the next step we need to just add some blank layers over the top oops add add a blank layer over the top i'm going to add a couple these are going to be texture so this one is going to be a texture light this one is going to be textures dark and this top layer is going to be a blend a blend a blend layer and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with each of those. So on the textures light, I'm going to go over to my brushes, and you're probably not seeing my brushes on the video because they're off. They're out of my video that's only capturing the Photoshop. But I've got some textures that I built for hide. So I'll show you. I'll zoom this up so you can see. This is a texture brush right here. So I'm going to um, switch to white paint and i'm going to leave it in normal while i paint just so that you can see what i'm doing and then i'm going to switch it to soft light so you can see how it blends in so i'm going to again paint on this texture paint oops get over to a brush um, i'm going to paint with this texture um, over again trying to stay sort in the lines of where the texture of the hide is and we're going to paint some texture back in over the top and you're going oh my goodness what in the world but just wait a minute so again we're trying to, to paint based on what we have right what we're painting along the lines of the painting within it's not paint by number but it certainly is still coloring within the lines So these are texture layers that's going to put some dimension into the hide. And again, for this video, I'm working fairly quickly. I would be a little more patient with it if I were painting this and I actually am painting this guy um, for myself. but. I'm moving a little quickly because we only have so much time on a video. Okay, so as you can see, I've kind of painted along the bumps of the hide. Okay, so that looks pretty bad. And you're going, wow, that really is kind of not what I want my paintings to look like. Um, but let's put a little bit of it down here. Okay. Now, now what we're going to do is we're going to change this layer to soft light. Voila! And bring down the opacity just a little bit. Now you can see that we just have a very subtle density back on there. So now we're going to go to the darks. 
and we're going to pick up pick up one of these dark browns and we're going to take a different texture brush a little bit different texture brush and we're going to do the same thing we're going to brush around the dark areas Again, going pretty fast just for demonstration purposes. You'll want to spend a little more time, but I'm just going fast so I can demonstrate. So now we've done the same thing with some with a different brush. probably not going to put any down in that dark area. Change it to soft light. Lower the opacity a little bit. And now here's what we have. And the last step that we're going to do is we're going to soften and bring all this stuff back together again. So again, I have a different type of brush that is a mixer brush that will allow you to sort of sample color and blend all this stuff back together again so it doesn't look so harsh. And um, this is a mixer brush that actually samples color. You'll see that I have my paint reservoir turned on. Um, my settings on here is a wet, full load. It's got a high mix on it, a high flow. Um, so I'm going to basically go over this. I'm constantly hitting my um, Alt key. You can see now that it's changed the color up in the reservoir based on where I am on the picture. Um, I'm painting around the different little bumps um, a little bit um, trying to get some of that texture smooth back out again um, the one thing about painting with the mixer brush uh, we grunge it up we smooth it down we grunge it up we smooth it down um, it's the way you get some dimension to your painting Let's grunge it up smooth it down now I could do this with one color because the mixer is set to 80 and so it wouldn't really matter if I left just one color in but I tend to like to sample because the primary color is the one that's going on top and if I put really really dark colors over the top of light colors um, it's it is noticeable so I do tend to do the sampling I mean all it does is mean you just hold your finger on the alt key and you keep sampling and so you get a different variety of paint um, oh the other thing with this particular brush is I am on sample all layers so it is winding a little bit and and it's taking a little more time in the background because it is sampling the layers um, because this is a blending technique, you wanna, you wanna, you wanna keep all of those layers turned on, so you're getting the benefit of all of the the rich colors that are throughout the image. Um, Again, I, even though I'm blending, I'm trying to follow some of the direct, direction because, again, 
you'll see these little things if you look close the direction of the brush see there I really swooped over the top um, I'm going pretty fast here I wouldn't do that as much if I was doing my own painting I would be a little more careful about that kind of stuff um, but for the video here I'm trying to demonstrate a technique so So here we've pretty much got most of that harshness back out again. And so this is one of those layers that I'm not going to put in soft light. I'm going to keep it in normal. Um, soft light tends to make this really contrasty and um, the normal mode with a low opacity just makes it nice and soft and kind of blends everything together. So. Let me show you how we bring the opacity of this down a little bit. And now here's what we had before, pretty harsh. And now this softens it up some. Nice and soft. But we still have all that great texture there. Okay, so that completes this video. We've done a quick, let's do a quick review. We started out with a uh, source layer that was um, basically a fairly grungy um, image taken through the uh, Adobe Camera Raw, pushed up our textures, our clarity or opened our shadows up made it pretty grungy we then ran it through the frequency separation so that we could get this really really soft underpainting at the same time we got the um, the high frequency layer that just had the texture on it we did a mixer painting we didn't worry too much about having filled in everything because we had this great underpainting available to us we added that uh, high frequency layer back in and um, reduced the opacity on it some and then we um, put a couple of texture layers on in the soft light mode one lights one darks and then we used a mixer brush in a sample all layers mode and we blended it all together and so that's what we have as our mixer brush with textures and blend modes on. Hope you enjoyed the video.